disagree with them, which is not the scientific way. It is a story about Westerners invoking the threat of climatic disaster to hinder vital industrial progress in the developing world. One clear thing that emerges from the whole uh, environmental debate is the point that uh, there's, there, there's somebody keen to kill the African dream, and the African dream is to develop. The environmental movement has evolved into the strongest force there is for preventing development in the developing countries. The global warming story is a cautionary tale of how a media scare became the defining idea of a generation. The whole global warming business has become like a religion. And uh, people who disagree are called heretics. I'm a heretic. Uh, the makers of this program are all heretics. In 2005, a House of Lords inquiry was set up to examine the scientific evidence of man-made global warming. A leading figure in that inquiry was Lord Lawson of Blaby, who, as Chancellor of the Exchequer in the 1980s, was the first politician to commit government money to global warming research. We had a very, very thorough inquiry, took evidence from a whole lot of uh, people expert in this area and produced a report. What surprised me was to discover how weak and uncertain the science was. In fact, there are more and more thoughtful people, some of them a little bit frightened to come out in the open, but who quietly, privately, and some of them publicly, are saying, hang on, wait a minute, this simply doesn't add up. We are told that the Earth's climate is changing. But the Earth's climate is always changing. In Earth's long history, there have been countless periods when it was much warmer and much cooler than it is today, when much of the world was covered by tropical forests or else vast ice sheets. The climate has always changed and changed without any help from us humans. We can trace the present warming trend back at least 200 years to the end of a very cold period in Earth's history. This cold spell is known to climatologists as the Little Ice Age. In the 14th century, Europe plunged into the Little Ice Age. And where we would look for evidence of this are the old illustrations and prints and pictures of Old Father Thames. Because during the hardest and toughest winters of that Little Ice Age, the Thames would freeze over. And there were wonderful ice fairs held on the Thames skating and people actually selling things on the ice. If we look back further in time, before the Little Ice Age, we find a balmy golden era when temperatures were higher than they are today, a time known to climatologists as the medieval warm period. It's important that people know that climate enabled a quite different lifestyle in the medieval period. We have this view today that warming is going to have apocalyptic outcomes. In fact, wherever you describe this warm period, it appears to be associated with riches. We're having a heat wave. In Europe, this was the great age of the cathedral builders, a time when, according to Chaucer, vineyards flourished even in the north of England. All over the city of London, there are little memories of the vineyards that grew in the medieval warm period. So this was a wonderfully rich time. And this little church, in a sense, symbolized it, because it comes from a period of great wealth.